for Xenoblade 3 Slice Pan, there's been a number of updates to the game. Most of these have been bug fixes and minor changes like adding the party save feature, and a few other things like making Mio's chain order actually function. However, in the 1.3 update, which was the one wave 3 balance update that added Masha and all of the challenge mode gauntlet, it added one small minor change to a certain skill, and this skill is Frenzied Combo. And Frenzied Combo reads, on a critical hit, recharge an art used by 30%. So you do this and you get about a little less than a 30 year art back every time you land a crit with the art. And what they did is they made art recharge work with Frenzied Combo on Agnian arts, where before it only worked with Gavessi arts, but Essentially, if you have increases to recharge via Protector's Pride or buffs or anything like that, you will now be able to get more back. Like, for instance, if you have 100% art recharge, then on every crit you've recharged 60% of the art instead of only 30% of the art. And this is very big because on Gavesi classes, there are two important master arts, Aerial Slash and Jackal Claw. So, they both have high crit rates and evade arts while active, so which means if they have a high crit rate, when you use them, you'll be able to crit pretty consistently with them, and that's very nice to have. But the other important factor is they both have a recharge of 5 and evade attacks, which means that if you land a crit with them and you have 100% art recharge, you will recover now 60% of the art, which is equivalent to 3 recharge points whenever you land a crit with each of these. And then a cancel normally gives you 1. With 100 art recharge, you get 2. So therefore, you will be able to get at a crit and a cancel will give you 5 recharge points on both of these arts, which means that you can infinitely cancel them back and forth into each other. And because these are master arts, any Kavesi class is able to do this, essentially changing the entire meta of how dodge tanking works. I'm going to go over builds and explain the new ways you can dodge tank with these new options available. And you know what, just to prove that it actually doesn't matter which class you're using when you're doing these dog tank setups, I'm going to show you the brand new tank, the War Medic tank. Now this is not actually a good idea, this is just to indicate that literally any Kvesi class is capable of doing this, but I'll go over the build now. So first of all, of course, four of these arts don't matter. This, yep, this is all. They don't matter. Deflector field doesn't really matter. The main things, of course, you have the area slash and the jackal claw, and that's all I'm really going to be using for this build to show it off. For skills, you're of course going to want the frenzied combo, because it's the whole point of the build, and the protector's pride to get that recharge. So that's 50% of the recharge, and that's halfway there already. And then ultimate qigong is for the additional damage that you get from those two arts, just to speed it up a little bit. In terms of gems, of course, analyze combo, power, weakness and empower combo as we can send then swell and blessing on top but again that's not going to matter as for accessories we of course need that high crit rate because war medic's crit rate is very low initially so you're going to need to increase that although we're using master arts so we'll actually be using the crit rate of incursor and martial arts instead so charity rings for the increase to attack and then the predator mask and then this one also has the additional recharge on it so that you can you get the 100% recharge this way. So pretty much that means this class is 100% recharge, essentially 100% crit rate once all the buffs and stuff are active, with the rest of the party just being a general support build where you've got ogres for combos and buffs and whatnot. So this war medic is going to be our tank. And now let's show that off. You, you want me to leave? Right, here we go. War Medic Tank versus Seraphic Serotonia. So first, we have the buffs up, and now we're going to start canceling those arts into each other infinitely. So it didn't quite go off right there yet because everything wasn't quite set up and active yet, but now he's got the aggro, and now it's starting. So I can start infinitely canceling them, and as you can see, hitting lane to crit, and then canceling it will immediately fully reach out to the other one, allowing him to go back and forth pretty much forever. Damage on this isn't all that good, actually, but it works well enough. And as you can see, missing an attack actually um, can make you not land the crit, so that could be a potential issue there, so you're gonna need good accuracy if you're gonna try this, you know, actually. In this case, it's not too significant, but you still being combo anyways, but overall, you kind of just cancel it back and forth and over and over again. And just get that recharge and keep going, so not all that particularly interesting, to be honest, so I'm just gonna speed up through the rest of this now real quick, so, you know, it's just more of the same fighting it and then eventually he's going to get to the end here still going 
and then it's going to die. So overall, just using area slash and deck claw, better enough to long to take all the aggro and block it all through evasion on a four minute class. So as you can see on actual viable classes, this is going to get very powerful very quickly. So let's show off the next one here now. Next up is the Smash Sword Fighter Evasion Tank. So the way this thing works is going to again use Aerial Slash, Jackal Claw, Infinite Cancels into each other so that you can get the infinite evasion and take all the aggro and dodge all moves. But at the same time you have the Air Slash Mighty Beat Fusion to get off very high damage smashes at the same time. So looking at the arts here, of course, we got the Air Slash and Jackal Claw. It might have been Air Slash Fusion, which is the one of the strongest smash damage fusions in the game. Ground Beat and Sword Strike just for their animations and pretty fast recharges. Deflector Field Talon Art, this likely won't be relevant, but it's an extra way to get more damage and recharge if you manage to get the Talon Art charged up. As for skills, with game we got Frenzy Combo and Protector's Pride as usual. Ultimate Qigong for the highest damage boost in the last slot. Gems, we got just the standard Analyze Weakness Power Combo. Actually, this Steel Cleaver can be a uh, Swelling Blessing instead because you're using that Awakening buff potentially. As for accessories, we've got Turn Ring for the attack boost, Predator Mask for additives, and then again we've got another one of those Recharge when non-defenders are targeted with Crafted Crit Rate on top of it. If you don't have this, you can replace one of these things with the uh, Thermo Headgear so that you can get that Crit Rate up to the maximum percent you can get. And back to fighting 12013 yeah, again, this time let's try it on hard. Or sorry, it's land, so you get like a break off to the side first. Nope, break doesn't hit, so just go for the glitter and melody. Set up the buffs, and now you should be ready to start canceling those together and then get enough super high damage smashes on at the same time. So, yeah, I'm just gonna be hitting these breaks here. Dodging all the attacks coming off, we're waiting for the allies to combo. Once the combos are off, then we can do a smash, and look at that, over 5 million damage smash. So, overall, you can be both a tank and the main damage dealer of the party at the same time with a build like this. Of course, you're sacrificing all of the damage dealing stuff, so you won't quite get the damage cap smashes this way, but overall, it's still very effective. And I have one more build I want to show that arguably the most powerful of all of the dodge tank builds. And that's going to be Flash Fencer. So Flash Fencer has a few notable properties that make it more valuable than the other dodge tanks. So looking at skills, it has Capable Hands here, which Capable Hands lets the town art charge, start charged at the battle immediately, which means that we can run the Deflector Field Talon Art, which Deflector Field will give you Awakening if you get hit while it has the animation out. And once that happens, the Awakening buff will give you more damage, defense reduction, and some Art Recharge, 50%, which means that you only have to run one of the two defense uh, Art Recharge increasing skills rather than both of them, which frees up a slot for more damage. So then looking at the rest of the arts here, we've got Cross Impact and Aerial Slash. So of course we got these two for the main evasion tanking. Cross Impact and Thorn are both multi-hits though, which is interesting because that means you can fully recharge them by triggering the Frenzy combo multiple times. And because Cross Impact gives Power Charge, you'll be able to do these fusions that do tons of damage because you've got Power Charge fusion arts with huge ratios on them. And that's what makes Flash Fencer so powerful. On top of having this stance here, Acceleration, which increases the animation speed of the arts, and because your recharge is tied to hits, that means your damage is going to go way higher with the acceleration active. And then you can also put on Resonant Flag, which will pass the awakening you get from the Deflector Field to the party. So this class is not only a, a dodge tank that does good damage, but it's also a buffer to the whole party. As for skills, we've got Qigong for damage increases, and then Frenzy Combo, of course, and then Cypher Edge to boost the crit rate. You could put something over Cypher Edge if you have a powerful enough accessory to boost crit rate more. I don't quite have one that strong, so I have Cypher Edge here, but you could go even harder in damage if you wanted. For the gems, I've got Analyze Weakness and Empowered Combo, as expected, and Swelling Blessing, so that you can increase the power of both the Awakening and the Power Charge that you'll be passing. And then for the accessories, we've of course got the Recharge Accessory, that with the additional crit rate on it, it's going to up to 66%. So turning range for the attack increase, and Chaotic Memory is here because I'm going to be fighting a very high agility enemy, but in normal circumstances you can actually swap this for even more damage, you know, like a Predator Mask or something like that. 
So overall, it's time to see what this monster with build can do in action. And this time, let's go all the way. Hard level 200 Seraphic Seratinia. So first you're going to take the aggro, and then you're going to activate the deflector field here, which once you get hit, you get the awakening buff to get yourself to the 100% heart recharge. Then you're going to do an acceleration, and then from there you can have your art recharge speed. And as you can see, the multi-hit arcs are going to be very fast because you're recharging them. You can cancel your fusions together, and as you can see, the DPS on this is off the charts for something that is also invincible. You're doing like over a million damage a second this way. So this Sertinia is going down super quickly. And every once in a while you just repass that resonant flag and acceleration to the party. Just so you can keep the awakening buffs. And then hopefully your glittering knowledge will be recharged. And then overall, as you can see, it's just about dead and it's only been a minute. Yep. 51 seconds, and that killed the final hardest fight in the entire game. So, as you can see, this build is super strong, and you don't even honestly need the rest of the support of the party. This one could do this by itself, assuming you had the buffs active at least. So, overall, I think this is, yeah, by far the strongest agility tank. And this class is the one that benefit the most from the buffs of the Frenzy Combo change. Alrighty, that's it for this video. So, overall, I think, yeah, this change was very huge for the game as a meta as a whole, because it made essentially a lot of classes, especially Kvesi classes, get significantly stronger. Where, ironically, because the Iodian classes have the stronger arts, the Kvesi classes are better, because then they have access to the masterable ones. I think this is a really interesting change to the game, and overall it really makes, uh, fortunately, I guess, a couple classes much worse, like uh, Full Metal Jaguar and stuff like that, that just don't really do this as effectively anymore because Flash Fencer outclasses them so hard. Yeah, so I guess, you know, maybe a weekly basis for these videos is good. Let me know if you have any ideas for next week's topic and uh, description or comments and take a look at the LC. If I can find something, um, my next big project is going to be that chain attack guide where you can see all my billion damage plus chain attacks and how to do something like that yourself. So look forward to that and uh, like, subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you around.